What's up everyone? Welcome back to Pack the Sleeve. My name is Justin and it is time for another edition of Weekly Winnings. So this is a series where I go over the deck that I played in uh, the week's tournament. Um, usually it's at, as it'll be F&M, but uh, once bigger tournaments are able to happen again, it'll also include uh, local stuff, SEG tour, and hopefully some GPs. Um, depending on where they're all at. But anyway, for this week, as you can probably tell from the video here, uh, we played Mono Green Aggro. Uh, diverted a little bit from our trusty Gruel deck, but uh, Mono Green has been doing really well in the current meta. Uh, it's kind of the premier aggro deck at the moment uh, overall. So let's take a look at the deck, talk about some of the choices, uh, take a look at the sideboard, and we'll talk about, uh, and then we'll talk about the games. So for our one drop, we of course have our trusty pelt collector, uh, mainstay for any green creature-based aggro lists. Uh, able to grow, get out of control once it gets the three counters. Give a trample, fantastic one drop. They pretty much have to answer it before it gets out of control. And then where the bulk of our deck is is our two drops. So. We have the Barkhide Troll, an interesting one that you probably wouldn't uh, normally think of as going in a constructed deck. Most people would probably consider it just uh, Draft Chaff, but the counter on it uh, is good for a couple of reasons. One, give a creature hexproof, always good to, to, per, uh, to prevent removal if you, as long as you have mana open. It grows the Pell Collector, which is very important. Um, but it also works really well with uh, Gem Razor, which we'll get to here in a moment. Um, but that is one of the filler two drops. Uh, you play all four of them. Of course, one of the biggest upgrades that has um, continued to push Mono Green forward is Scavenging Ooze. Fantastic versus the Mono Red lists, um, whether the Cavalcade or the Embercleave lists, um, or uh, the Uro lists as well. Being able to eat out the Uro out of the graveyard or um, just even shrinking their graveyard so they can't escape the Uro if you're not, if they have all the mana open and you don't have, gain priority, you can uh, destroy the graveyard before they get a chance to escape it. So, Scavenging Ooze also grows Pelt Collector, um, gaining life versus the mono red lists. Just a really, really good addition. One of my favorite green creatures. Then we have Wildborn Preserver. Uh, this one is one that is pretty underrated, um, but uh, being able to flash in, having reach, and then just being able to grow out of control. All of our creatures grow, or have the ability to grow the Wildborn Preserver. You can get it really big, um, and then give it trample with Vivian. So, pretty fantastic option. Um, also, gets around sweepers, so after they sweep the board, you're able to flash it in and then go to town with it. Um, and then our last kind of two drop, but also just can be any uh, anything obviously, is the Stone Coil Serpent. Most lists run four, I am running three, that is primarily because I only have three. Um, but protection from multicolored means it can be bounced by Teferi. Um, it's mana cost means it can't be hit by uh, Elspeth Conqueror's death. It can block Uro. It can block uh, Krasis uh, without dying. A lot of different tools uh, with this one. And being able to uh, put Gem Razor on top of it gives Gem Razor reach and protection as well as uh, putting all those counters on top of a 4-4 body. So a really good, uh, a really good card. And then, in place of the fourth one, I tried a Garruk's Harbinger, a new card, out of M21. I chose this one primarily because of the amount of black removal at my store. <clears throat> I figured having Hexproof from black might be uh, pretty powerful. Um, I was only able to get its trigger once, I think, in my games, but uh, when I did, it was pretty strong. So... Uh, pretty impressed by the one of, and I think I'll try it again. 
Moving right along up to the four drops, we have, of course, the Gem Razor. Uh, playing the full four of in this deck. Reach and Trample, really, really strong. Being able to mutate for three on top of Barkhide Troll or um, Wildborn Preserver or even Stone Coil Serpent. Uh, really good. You can also do it on top of any of the other, like Pelt Collector um, as well, just to be able to give some of these other creatures Trample. Um, Barkhide Troll was actually really good because you then able to remove the counter to give it Hexproof, so you're able to protect one of your bigger creatures. Um, and your creatures having Trample just works really, really well with uh, the removal suite that you have in this deck. So Gem Razor, very impressive. Um, just being able to deal with Elspeth Conqueror's Death, being able to deal with... Um, what's the other one? Uh, Reclamation, if you have Reclamation at your store. And then, of course, the last creature, most important for any green aggro list, is Questing Beast. Card is just a house, really difficult to deal with. They pretty much have to have an answer or it's just going to get out of control. Um, once again, combining Gem Razor and Questing Beast, being able to put uh, Trample in your Death Toucher is just amazing. Then our non-creatures. We play two, Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Uh, being able to pump up our creatures, being able to give, like I said, Questing Beast and some of our other creatures Trample. Uh, really big scavenging ooze trample is great. Uh, being able to remove blockers by just having it deal damage. Uh, Questing Beast can remove anything. Uh, our creatures get really big really quick, so that's a really good one. Uh, I've not used her minus five yet. Um, there's not really much out of the sideboard that I would want to pull in, but uh, in a long grindy game versus blue decks, you could bring uh, you could grab a Ceratops out of the sideboard. Um, but overall, you're mainly using her for her plus one and her minus three. And then we play for Ram Through. This card is really, really good because of all the trample creatures that we have. Um, being able to kill some of the smaller creatures and having damage trample through. Um, in one of my games, I had two of these in hand, and I was able to kill an Uro with a 5-5. Five, five. So first one put it down to one toughness, and then the last one killed, it, killed the last, uh, last toughness and then trampled it for four, and then I was able to to pretty much kill my opponent that turn or get them in a really bad spot so the next turn they pretty much were going to die no matter what. Uh, so ram through, really good uh, piece of removal for these green creature decks. And then we play a one of Ranger's Guile. Um, it's more of a fun of, but being able to blank a piece of removal uh, is really good in a tempo game, especially if you're able to do it with one of the more expensive removal spells in black like Bedevil. Deck plays 21 forests, really easy, really simple. You would need to be able to cast all your stuff. It plays two Castle Garenbriggs, and I know looking at all these creatures, you may wonder why only two Castle Garenbriggs. It seems like you'd want to play more. Uh, the primary reason is you cannot grow Wildborn Preserver with it. You can't spend it to, to grow the Scavenging Ooze. You can really only use it to cast creatures, so you want to be careful with when you activate it and that you don't leave a lot of mana hanging uh, in the, out in the pool because you couldn't cast or use some of the abilities that you were planning on. So that's why the two Castle Gambrigs. And then last but not least, we have two Mobilized Districts just as an additional creature. It's pretty easy to activate, but it's also just um, sweeper prevention so that you still are able, whoops, still are able to apply pressure after they sweep and if you don't have any other creatures in hand. So Mobilized District, pretty good. And you're able to... There's very few creatures that you can't cast uh, as long as you have mostly green mana. The only one would be if you only have two lands in your starting hand with Mobilized District and you have Bark Hide Troll, you obviously can't cast it. But most of the rest of them use at least um, one colorless mana to cast. Moving right along into the sideboard... It plays three Primal Might, uh, really good for the creature matchups, uh, particularly Mono Red uh, I found at my store, really good for that matchup. Um, I think Mono Green is pretty favored over Mono Red now, especially with the additions of Scavenging Ooze, uh, so Primal Might may be overkill, but I still really enjoy the cards, but we'll see as the meta continues to adapt throughout the core 2021 season whether or not Primal Might will stay in the sideboard or not. 
Um, once again, for the mono red matchups, we also have the four love struck beasts. Red has an incredibly difficult time fighting through the 5-5 five, five half of this. Even if they are able to kill the 1-1 one, one human creature tokens and you're never able to attack with Love Struck Beast, you can pretty much brick wall them all day long with a Love Struck Beast because none of their removal can touch it. So, really good card. Much better in the sideboard at the moment than in the main board. I also have, am trying out, two Spore Web Weavers. One of the new cards printed in M21. Obviously, having reach is good. Hexproof from blue and the matchups that I'm bringing it in is not really relevant. But gaining a life and creating another blocker versus mono red is really difficult for them to deal with. And you can just block all their little creatures all day long with a Spore Web Weaver. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to draw it in the matchup I had versus mono red this week. But I think, um, I think going forward, I'm going to continue to use it in the sideboard because I think it's really good. Now, most of the lists you'll see running online or in articles and things like that, of course, you'll recognize Shifting Ceratops. Best cyborg creature you have versus uh, anything blue. Um, can't counter it, comes in, has protection from blue, so they can't block it with their arrow, they can't block it with their um, Hydroid Crisis, and you can block them all day long. Um, I've won many games by being able to haste... Uh, uh, play it on five and then give it haste and just win the game for five damage there because none of their stuff can get in the way of it. So fantastic versus any of your blue matchups. And last but not least, we have uh, Okam Adversary. I think this card, uh, you'll see a lot of lists that have four of these. I think they're mostly for the control matchups and the team of reclamation matchup because uh, you can drop it for two mana, it's two, three, and you can... Uh, just continually draw cards and find your answers. Um, I play two because we don't have very many of those lists, so it's not very necessary. All right, so this week we played versus, round one was versus a Rakdos control list. Had a lot of removal, so it was pretty much burn them out of removal and then just finish them off with the creatures we had left, make them use their mana in awkward ways. A lot of it comes in tapped, and we're able, we were able to put a lot of pressure on them uh, really quickly. Basically saw two creatures in both matchups. One was Bone Crusher Giant, and the other was a Kroxa. Um, and was just able to use like Ram Through and things like that to clear the way and just kill them. So it was really, really good. Uh, round two was versus Simic Ramp, uh, versus a very good opponent. Uh, we, were able to, we lost game one pretty heavily. They landed Ugin, and it was game over. Uh, games two and three, we were able to keep the pressure up. Um, in game two, land uh, we landed um, just a lot of creatures. They weren't able to remove them. Uh, they drew a ton of lands because they were in a, uh, a Yorion Simic list, so they had 80 cards. I think they ended the game with like five lands in play. And then game three um, forced a couple tough decisions. We were able to uh, get their Uro out of their graveyard like I said earlier, with uh, we were able to kill kill it with two ram throughs and then ate it with the scavenging ooze, and then top decked ceratops and won from there. Um, really tough opponent, really good games, uh, but we were able to get the win there. And then round three was versus mono red cavalcade. Our creatures were just bigger than theirs. Um, game one, they landed Torbrand, made some. Uh, tough blocks on my part, but we were able to save most of our big creatures and then kill them on the crackback. And then um, game two, they really never drew anything. So we ended the weekend or the the night 3-0. And so we got a couple things to open here. So our store does the reliquary towers as um, just for participation. So everybody who played got a reliquary tower. Really great art. Um, really good way to support your local store, depending on how they do it. Uh, they also gave he also gave everyone who played uh, the welcome booster, so we're going to open that. And last but not least, of course, is the foil promo pack, so we'll open that last. So let's go ahead and see what it comes in these welcome packs. All right, so we got a foil planes, a foil magma. A Demon of Loathing, which is, I think, from the Theros theme packs. Uh, Commander Sphere, 
I think this goes in a lot of commander decks. Uh, it comes in a lot of the pre-cons as well, so pretty solid. Uh, really cool artwork of Teferi. Uh, spoiler a little bit here on the Garuk. Uh, pretty solid Planeswalker to have in these welcome packs, so really good. Uh, Niv-Mizzet Parun. Also uh, saw a lot more play uh, early on in its life in the format, but still a really good, uh, really good rare. Underworld Dreams, one of these janky uh, card draw decks. Um, archetype of Imagination give, gives your creatures flying, and the opponent loses flying and can't have or gain flying. A Foil Garuk's Gorehorn, a Showcase Fairy Guide Mother, and a Code. So anyone who wants this code, go ahead and redeem it. So there you go. Um, only one per account, so... I think uh, from what people were saying, um, most people have the same, uh, most people all got the same pack. Like uh, these welcome packs have all the same stuff in there. So if you're looking at them, uh, I would only ever get one. So let's go ahead and see what foils we got. I am going to save the pack code because I play a lot of arena. And so we got a foil animal sanctuary. Tap to add colorless, and you can spend two and tap it to put up one-one counter on target bird, cat, dog, goat, ox, or snake. I think those will be good in some of the commander tribal decks. We got the foil heartfire immolator for one and a red for a two-two human wizard with prowess. You can spend a red to sacrifice, uh, sacrifice it, and it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. And ooh, there we go. I'll take that. A foil blast zone. Enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it. You can tap a dad colas, and you can spend uh, XX mana to put X number of charge counters on Blast Zone, and then three and tap it to sacrifice Blast Zone. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on the Blast Zone. So pretty solid, uh, pretty solid pack there. A couple nice foil lands, um, but yeah, so. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up for now. Uh, I'd love it for you to, to hit that subscribe button, uh, like the video, leave a note in the comments, let us know how we're doing. Um, but I am all tapped out for now.